Naomi Wolf actually apologizes to conservatives and has some liberals tearing their hair for having done that. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another declaration of truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. Last week, a sleepy piece of news dropped that no one noticed at the time. And small wonder no one noticed because the... Silicon Valley Bank failed at about that time, and then you had the rather raucous hearings of the Weaponization Subcommittee. But the Democrats on that subcommittee, said especially Delegate Stacy Plaskett from the U.S. Virgin Islands and Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz of Florida, should have taken due note of this event before they, especially Plaskett and Wasserman Schultz, mouthed off during those hearings. Naomi Wolf, a journalist who bought their narrative hook, line, and sinker, has now apologized for having done so. Furthermore, her apology will doubtless serve as a tactical map for Republicans as the formerly hunted hunt their hunters. Before I dive deep into that apology, what she said, and what she only hinted at, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. And be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there, especially this t-shirt that I have chosen for today, which depicts Donald J. Trump, the great MAGA king. He's a king in exile now, and you'll hear a lot of squealing from liberals who are afraid he'll come back. What they're really afraid of is what he's going to do when he gets back. And I'll have more to say, not so much about his specific plans, but about the real issues he represents toward the end. One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also click the bell icon every time you get, an, uh, uh, get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon, this, the heart shape with the U.S. dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do, so long as it's legal tender. And one last thing beyond that. Uh, that the, the thumbnail for this video includes a photograph of Dr. Wolf from the Texas uh, 2012 Texas Book Festival. Mr. Larry D. Moore took that photograph and released it under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License to which I've provided a link in the description, as the license requires. Naomi Wolf posted her apology publicly, meaning not behind any paywall, on her Substack page on March 9th. I have a link uh, to that Substack article in the description. The Western Journal picked it up the next day, and the Times of America picked it up two days later. I noticed it. On, an inst on Instagram yesterday morning when I was tending to another chore. But the legacy media did not report this at all. Instead, they seemed to collaborate on a new narrative, one that Delegate Plaskett angrily articulated in the Weaponization Subcommittee. As ranking member, she accused the Republican contingent and their star witnesses of the day of attempting to rewrite history and what is that history she so fervently wants to protect? That President Donald J. Trump, in the final years of his pres presidency, planned and ordered an insurrection and a mass takeover of the Capitol on January 6, 2021. Naomi Wolf believed that narrative, and now she doesn't. This is nothing short of disastrous for the Democrats. Rumors are already starting to fly that the Republicans were preparing to charge members of the January 6th committee with a number of offenses. Presumably, they would include, without limitation, number one, misprision of a felony or felonies, including, without limitation, treason against the United States. And number two, withholding exculpatory evidence in criminal trials and encouraging various prosecuting attorneys to do the same. Prosecuting attorneys get disbarred for pulling stunts like that. By far, their worst offense is not necessarily criminal, 
but constitutional, sitting on a, on a committee, the sole mission of which is to write and report favorably bills of attainder and an ex post facto law. A bill of attainder is one declaring an individual or group to be outlaws by virtue of nothing more than who they are. An ex post facto law is a law that punishes you for something you did before they made it illegal. Naomi Wolf now announces that she wants no further part of that, but she knows that she must apologize for the role she has already played and words she has already written. And apologize she has. And people like Delegate Plaskett and Representative Wasserman Schultz, Democrats Adam Schiff, Zoe Lofgren, and Pete Aguilar from California, Jamie Raskin, and I have to apologize and say he is a man, by the way, though it serves him right for affecting an epicene nickname. From Maryland, and former representatives Liz Cheney, the rhino from Wyo, Adam Kinzinger, the other rhino from Illinois, and Democrats Stephanie Murphy from Florida, and Elaine Luria from Virginia. They will doubtless wish that no, Naomi Wolf hadn't apologized. All those representatives and former representatives I just named, except for Delegate Plaskett and Representative Wasserman Schultz, are members of the now defunct January 6th committee. Speaking of which, Representative Benny Thompson of Mississippi, the chairman of that committee, already knows what's coming. Already he is protesting that he never saw the damning footage Tucker Carlson famously excerpted. Now at first I thought when I heard that, that if anyone seriously believed that, I could sell them my partnership stake in the Woodrow Wilson Bridge that spans the Potomac. But you know what? That might be correct. Nancy Pelosi might have told them not to review it so they could have plausible deniability. I wouldn't put it past her. Back to Naomi Wolf. She begins by telling the American people what she will not do. I quote, it's tempting to sweep this confrontation with my own gullibility under the rug to move on without ever acknowledging that I was duped, that as a result I made mistakes in judgment, and that these mistakes multiplied by the tens of thousands and mi uh, millions on the part of people just like me hurt millions of other people like you all in existential ways. But that erasure of personal and public history would be wrong, unquote Naomi Wolf. Well, right or wrong, that is what leftists do. And by you, she means me, me, and other American conservatives everywhere, whether they entered the Capitol or attended the big rally or not. Which brings me to one important point that she makes. The Capitol and the White House are public buildings. Again, I quote, they have always been open to U.S. citizens and foreign visitors, close quote. And why else, she asked, did Congress, then under President James Buchanan, build the galleries that overlook the House and Senate? I visited the House gallery in the winter following the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Her article is full of links, including what to know before you go visit the Capitol and what and watch Congress in action. The replica Senate, that Senate suite that Columbia Pictures built for Mr. Smith Goes to Washington in 1939 includes the Senate Gallery. And you, and you can also see Statuary Hall. That's in that movie too. And raucous crowds have a precedent. The Electoral Commission of 1877 that gave the presidency to Rutherford B. Hayes. Naomi Wolf also decries calling the January 6th event an insurrection. The bonus army, she says, that might have been an insurrection. This was not. Again, I quote, Those who violently entered the Capitol or who engaged in violence inside of it must, of course, be held accountable, as must violent protesters of every political stripe anywhere. But in addition, Anyone in leadership who misrepresented to the public the events of the day so as to distort the complexity of its actual history must also be held accountable. Jan 6 has become, as the DNC intended it to become, after the fact, a third rail. 
a shorthand used to dismiss or criminalize an entire population and political point of view. Close quote. It was also a false flag pseudo operation, and the DNC knew it. I say they planned it before the fact. Naomi Wolf goes on to correct the record on several points in this order. First, Speakers of the House are in charge of the Capitol Police. The Capitol Police says so. Whoever denies that is lying. Second, Officer Brian Sicknick died of complications of stroke. The Capitol Police own medical examiner does not assign the manner of death as homicide, but rather as natural causes. Yet the Capitol Police also list him as having died in the line of duty. And you'll remember I said they'd do that. And that's very odd, because he was walking around in apparent good health all day that day. He suffered two strokes the day after the event. Third, Senator Charles M. Schumer from New York, the majority leader, shamefully says Fox News should not use the footage. But he does not deny the reality or the veracity of that footage. He can't, unless he wants to look like not only a liar, but a stupid liar. Fourth, Senator Mitch McConnell, the rhino from Kentucky and minority leader, similarly called it a mistake to contradict the official narrative. Wolf then says that excerpting the footage, which I will not call property but part of the national common, is no different from the New York Times and the Washington Post printing excerpts from Daniel X. Ellsberg's Pentagon Papers. The Supreme Court held, by the way, in U.S. versus New York Times and Washington Post, that those two newspapers acted within their rights under the First Amendment. Then she reveals the stunner. Capitol Police officers received no guidance on how to handle the situation when, as I freely admit, got out of control. it got out of control. 200 people did do bad things after Ray Epps, fence cutter bulwark, and scaffold commander roped them into it. And you've heard me talk about that before. Officer Tariq Johnson told this about getting no guidance to Tucker Carlson. He could have told it to the January 6th committee, but they never called him to testify. He says, quote, My voice is one of the first ones you hear on the audio transmission, so I did expect to get an interview sometime, but it didn't happen. I guess the focus was on Donald Trump." Unquote Tariq Johnson. And of course it was. Such is the nature of false flag pseudo-operations, which are, by definition, attacks you stage on yourself with the intent to blame others for them. In this case, the Capitol Police violated their own security procedures, allowing a break in the chain of command. And for that, they can have only one motive. And what about Jacob Chansley, the QAnon shaman, getting a Capitol Police escort through a building, through the building? They even ushered him onto the very floor of the Senate chamber. In fact, no one enters that chamber except a senator, a senator-elect or senator-designate, a page, or rarely an emergency first responder. Now, Chansley's former attorney says he never saw the footage either, as he absolutely should have. Again, I quote Naomi Wolf, the violence of Jan 6 and its subsequent service as a talking point by the Democrats' leadership risks its use also to justify the closing off of our public buildings from U.S. citizens altogether. This would be convenient to tyrants of any party." Close quote. You bet your sweet life it would be convenient, and you know what? It's already happened. Those fences went up and they didn't come down for nearly two years. Those aren't the only lies Naomi Wolf blows up either. Before I get to them, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You are not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the past few years. 
Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges, but if you're like me, many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Alliance helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides, either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLiance.com. Learn how you can build a legacy for your future. And this is doubly important that the, collection, the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank is no small thing. Excuse me a bit. Ah, there we are. As I said, Naomi Wolf goes on to apologize for believing many other lies the legacy media have told. She cites NPR, MSNBC, and the New York Times but we had no reason to suppose that they were the only ones telling these lies. So the following are true statements she now acknowledges to be true. First, Hunter Biden's laptop was real. Whoever called it a Russian plant is lying. That applies even to a hoity-toity place like the Johns Hopkins University. Second, the Trump campaign did not collaborate with any Russian agency nor was Trump a Russian asset. Third, Christopher Steele's dossier was a tissue of lies. And as an aside, Britain's MI6 clearly is not and never was the fabled secret service familiar to fans of Commander James Bond, CMG, RNVSR, otherwise known as 007. And last, and possibly most important, Trump did encourage people to peacefully and patriotic let your voice be heard. The legacy media kept that fact secret. So did Twitter, until Elon Musk bought it. I have links in the description to six of Donald Trump's last tweets, telling people to re respect the Capitol Police, decrying such violence as actually took place, and promising that he would, uh, that he would see that we, at least 75 million of us uh, who voted for him, would not suffer maltreatment. Now, I have to say, that was a promise he could not keep because he lost all authority. But that's why so many of us lawyered up. And speaking of whom, again, I quote, I don't like President Trump. Do I not? Who knows? I have been lied to about him for so, so much for so long. I can't tell whether my instinctive aversion is simply the habitual residue of years of being, of being on the receiving end of lies but I like the liars who are our current gatekeepers even less." Unquote Naomi Wolf. And she is so right. When a witness lies about a material point, no one can rely on anything else that witness says. Trial courts all over the land apply that rule. I call it the Aesop rule, which he articulated in his fable of the boy who cried wolf. With apologies to Naomi Wolf for a pun I did not intend. Naomi Wolf acknowledges that some might call her apology too little too late. Not I! I give her credit for acting like an adult and facing the music like one. What's more, her essay has a ton of links to back up everything she says. I urge you to follow the link to her substack. Again, it's a public post, so no payroll. She wanted to make sure everybody could see it, and we can. She has declined to draw from the evidence certain more disturbing conclusions that Tucker Carlson drew, and for that matter, that I have drawn. I don't think she can imagine, much less deduce, that the entire event was a false flag pseudo-operation. If she could, that would explain a great many things she says she cannot explain. Now, Jacob Chansley, uh, like how Jacob Chansley in his outlandish costume and makeup could get a police escort. But if any person on the political left was going to issue an apology like that, Naomi Wolf was going to be the first. I have not found myself in agreement with everything she has said any time she says it, but I understand where it comes from, and I always believe she had one line that she would never cross. Somebody enticed her across that line, and Tucker Carlson's report showed her where she crossed the line, 
Her apology is the result. Now that she's given it and shown who has the receipts and who doesn't, conservatives are in honor bound to acknowledge her contrition and her contribution. Clearly, not all of her subscribers feel that way. Some want to, want to make the narrative last, that not only was the event an insurrection, but that Trump wants to be a dictator. One such comment, to which I've also left a link in the description, reveals the real reasons that drive the January 6th insurrection narrative. This person says she went into therapy, and her therapist evidently still sympathized with her. A sad commentary indeed, and maybe someday soon I'll tell you what I think of the psychiatric profession and why I prefer pastoral counselors as a general rule. She calls her country, this the country, and I quote, a deeply divided nation completely lost in a haze, close quote, and to clear that haze, she would appear to plumb for five particular leftist goals. They are, one, a university professoriate dedicated to indoctrinating students with socialistic ideology. Two, the adoption of alternative lifestyles for the very sake of adopting alternative lifestyles. Three, the right to end a pregnancy at any time for any reason or no reason. Four, a prohibition against Christianity and presumably against those who hold only to what we Christians call the Old Testament. And in this regard, I have to say, that neither Charles Schumer nor Debbie Wasserman Schultz can possibly be drawing inspiration from that testament. Why do I say that? Because nothing in it can possibly sanction what those two routinely do. They violate so many of the Ten Commandments and so often it isn't even funny. To be specific, they bear false witness against all who disagree with them, they conspire to steal the fruits of our labors and put them to purposes we would never sanction, and in the name of their, consti their cons consistent constituents, they openly covet and begrudge us all that we possess. And I invite both of them and anyone who adheres to them to leave me a comment if they care to dispute what I just said. And what is the fifth thing that this commenter wants? A new law that no person, except a law enforcement officer, an active duty military service person, a very important person, or his, her, their bodyguard, shall own, carry, or so much as touch, much less discharge a firearm. I get all that, not from what the commentator actually says she advocates, but from what she says she decries. Furthermore, I will avow that Donald J. Trump got in the way of all these things. That is the real issue in the debate on what did or did not happen on January 6, 2021. Happily, the bulk of the comments Naomi Wolf's essay has received have been positive. Of course, we accept her apology because it expresses sincere contrition and also explains much that the, uh, that the promoters of the false narrative never could explain. Most of the commenters, to their credit, understand that. The larger question is why the legacy media studiously ignored this document when it first appeared. I have a link in the description to an old CNN article from last summer that speaks volumes. The legacy media feared even last summer that the Republicans might someday avenge themselves. That day has now arrived. And as I've said before, the Varian Commission is no more, and the Plowdian Commission has succeeded. Look them up in any reputable search engine. The once hunted are now hunting the hunters. It's happening already. I have a link in the description to a tweet that came in at 9.45 a.m. Eastern Time yesterday morning, showing an image of a motion to dismiss in a January 6th criminal trial. I also have a link in the description to a follow-up tweet that that same user dropped less than a quarter hour later, in which she accused the FBI of destroying certain emails even after receiving an order to preserve. We see here not only withholding of exculpatory evidence, but willful and malicious destruction of that evidence. 
This behavior is enough to dismiss every case against any defendant charged for these events. Even one whom authorities suspect of the worst acts deserves proper handling of their cases under the Constitution. Defendants in other criminal cases have beaten 187 raps on lesser lapses than this. And then maybe we can try a certain Capitol Police officer for unlawfully taking the life, uh, a, a life under color of authority. Now that's one apology Naomi Wolf didn't have to make, but someone must. Links in the description of the article to Naomi Wolf's original apology and that particular comment on it that I mentioned, to Donald Trump's last tweets, to that article in CNN saying Republicans were planning investigatory revenge last summer, to Julie Kelly's two tweets about the motion to dismiss and the accusation about withholding or even destruction of evidence, to the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License, to my Declarations of Truth Twitter account, and to Conservative News and Views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store. And to OurSilverLines.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel and links to the January 6th playlist and to two videos from other influencers talking about real-life examples of prosecutors withholding evidence. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.